This is the first video in the avian physiology series. Avian meaning relating to birds and physiology meaning the biology dealing with normal functions of an animal's body. In this video, we will cover the bursa of Fabricius in avians. Throughout this video, we'll be covering the history, anatomy, functions, morphology, histology, maturation, and the significance of the bursa of Fabricius in avians. By definition, the bursa of Fabricius is a dorsal diverticulum of the proctodial region of the cloaca. Now, let's break that down. Let's break that definition down by looking at the prefixes and suffixes to determine these scientific words. First, dorsal, which refers to the upper side or the back side of an animal, such as the back fin on a dolphin, known as the dorsal fin. Second, the diverticulum means a pouch or sac from a cavity or passage. With this, that means that the bursa of Fabricius is a sac or pouch on the upper side of the birds. We can then figure out what proctodial means by using the prefix procto, meaning anus or reticulum, rectum. Finally, cloaca, which refers to the terminal cavity for intestinal, urinary, and genital canals in non-mammal vertebrates and some invertebrates. The cloaca has a vent which releases waste from the animal. So we know that the bursa of Fabricius is really just a pouch in the region of the cloaca on the upper side or the dorsal area. The bursa of Fabricius can also be shortened to just bursa, meaning just the organ, instead of also including the anatomy in its official title. These diagrams will show the anatomical location of the bursa and other significant body parts in an avian. The picture on the left shows the cloaca right about here. Um, based on the definition, the bursa should be near the cloaca but on the dorsal side. So that means it's going to be right around here. If we look at the diagram on the left, on the right, we see that the bursa is, in fact, near the anus and is on the dorsal side of the bird. So the bursa is going to be about right here where this diagram is showing, and then the cloaca is going to be about right here, right underneath it. Now that we have an understanding of what the bursa is, um, it's important to re understand the history and how it became about knowing how it became, we got that definition. Um, the bursa of Fabricius was originally discovered in the 17th century by um, this guy, his last name's Fabricius. Although he realized uh, the structure was unique to just avians, he believed that it was only present in females and acted as a semen receptor. And it wasn't until mid 20th century that its true immune system function was discovered by Dr. Glick. He wanted to determine the function of the bursa, so he removed them from chicks. This resulted in his graduate student unintentionally selecting bursectum-sized birds to be immunized. When the chickens failed to produce the antibodies, Glick and his students realized the importance of the bursa in producing these antibodies. Which leads to the discovery of the function. Uh, Dr. Glick and his student discovered that the bursa's true function uh, functions as lymphoid or Lymphoid organs. Lymphatic organs are where lymphocytes are formed and matured. These organs are the primary defense in the immune system. Specifically, the bursa is responsible for the amplification and diversification of B lymphoid progenitors. Amplification means to increase the volume, 
and differentiation means being able to recognize something specific in the body. The bursa differs B cells into plasma cells and memory cells. However, it is important to realize that just like in mammals, the B cells in birds are still produced by the bone marrow. The bursa is only where they are differentiated. B cells are responsible for producing antibodies for the immune system. And then after differentiation, they move to organs such as the spleen, the lymph nodes, or other lymphoid organs to prepare for the immune responses. All right, now that we have learned the basics of the bursa of Fabricius, I will be discussing the more detailed physiology of this uniquely avian feature. Let's begin with the morphology, or shape and structure, of the bursa of Fabricius. In chickens, the bursa of Fabricius has a round or oval shape, but in other birds, such as ducks, it can be elongated. As seen in the right-hand side of this image, the bursa of Fabricius has a smooth, whitish outer surface. In most species, but not all species, the inner surface is plicated, meaning that it has all these folds in it. These plicae cause a reorganization of surface epithelial cells, causing them to extend into the membrane of the bursa as epithelial buds. So in other words, the cells making up the outer layer of the bursa of Fabricius get pushed around by the many folds and eventually push into the membrane themselves to form buds. Moving into the histology or study of the tissue of the bursa of Fabricius, we see that these epithelial buds become bursal follicles during early embryonic development. So while the embryo develops in the egg, the epithelial buds become follicles or small sacs on the bursa of Fabricius. These follicles are numerous. In fact, there are approximately 12,000 follicles in the bursa of the chicken. Each follicle has a cortex and a medulla. The cortex is the outer layer, which surrounds the inner layer called the medulla. The cortex houses many white blood cells, such as lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. In the microscopic views on the right of this slide, you can see a follicle and also a zoomed in image of the cortex and medulla. To put this into perspective, you should realize that this image on the right is a zoomed in view of this small circle in the image on the left. The bursal follicles develop as the bursa of Fabricius develops, which begins early on in the embryo. To start, pre-bursal B cells from the spleen colonize the bursa between embryonic days 8 and 15. So after the first week of development in the embryo, B cells migrate from the spleen through the gut to the bursa of Fabricius, which is located in the proctodial region of the cloaca. Next, the B cells begin increasing and follicles begin to form until hatching occurs. After hatching, the bursa of Fabricius um, the follicles in the bursa of Fabricius begin to develop a cortex and a medulla. And the differentiated B cells migrate from the bursa of Fabricius to lymphoid organs such as the spleen or lymph nodes. The bursa of Fabricius grows the most in the embryo right after hatching and during embryonic development. It's important to note that by two weeks, the bursa of Fabricius has reached its full size and begins to shrink as the bird ages. This is evident in the chart on the left. Our white bar here represents B cells in the bursa of Fabricius, and the blue bar represents B cells in the spleen, and another lymphoid organ, in avians. You can see that between day 1 and day 14, the white bar representing the bursa increases, meaning there are more B cells present day 14 than there were at day 1. You can also see then that the spleen cells increase in a similar fashion. However, by day 28, when the bursa has already peaked in its development and begins to deteriorate, the amount of B cells has decreased dramatically in the bursa of Fabricius, whereas the spleen B cells have increased dramatically. Which, from what we've learned, makes sense because the function of the bursa has peaked and is deteriorating.
In contrast, the spleen has received a great deal of differentiated B cells from the bursa of Fabricius. This diagram here serves as a great tool to test your understanding of the bursa of Fabricius and its role in avians. To orient you, these green circles represent B cells, blue circles represent T cells, and the brown circles are undifferentiated lymphocytes, or white blood cells. The highlighted text here represents primary lymphoid organs. In this case, this would be the thymus and the bursa of Fabricius, which is only present in birds. Over here are your secondary lymphoid organs, such as the lymph node, spleen, and other lymphoid organs. Starting on the left, you can see that the lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow. To become B cells, or to become, pardon me, to become T cells, the lymphocytes will go to the thymus, where they are differentiated, becoming T cells, and then traveling to secondary lymphoid organs, such as the lymph node or spleen. In mammals, after lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow, they are further differentiated within the same location of the bone marrow. And then after that differentiation, they travel directly to the secondary lymphoid organs along this arrow. In contrast, avian's lymphocytes travel to the bursa of Fabricius to become developed and differentiated into B cells. From there, the bursa of Fabricius sends the B cells to lymphoid organs such as the spleen. So we have learned that B cells are differentiated differently in birds than in mammals. In mammals, the B cells are created and differentiated in the bone marrow, but in avians, they are produced in the bone marrow and differentiated in the bursa of Fabricius. In both cases, B cells end up in the lymphoid organs and serve the same purpose of antibody response. This is our list of sources. Thank you for listening, and we hope you found this video helpful.